I'm Tom Overton. Uh, I am uh, uh, Associate Director of Cornell Cooperative Extension with Oversight of Agriculture and Food Systems. And I'm also a professor in dairy management uh, in the Department of Animal Science. And uh, I also direct the statewide pro-dairy program. So I've got a few different hats that I, that I wear here on campus. So Tom, how long have you been involved with Extension? So I came to Cornell in, uh, in 1998 um, as an assistant professor. Uh, and I had an Extension appointment uh, when I started here at Cornell, I, was, I started as a 60% extension, 40% uh, research, and so within, uh, I think within two or three weeks after, after, uh, after starting at Cornell, I was already out on the road um, interacting with nutritionists and others out in the dairy industry uh, related to more dairy nutrition and, and related issues like that. So it's been, so it's been 16, 16 years. years. Yep. September 1st of 1998 was my was my start date. So, so. Just, just out of curiosity, in the 16 years you've been here, that's going on two decades. What kind of changes <laughs> have you What kind of changes have you seen in in agriculture here in New York, and then the cooperative extension system? Well, I, I, you know, I I think it's been a period of probably tremendous change all the all the way along. Um, I think about. Uh, agriculture and the dairy industry and the employment of technology um, in the industry over the last the uh, more sophisticated uh, pretty much everything in all aspects of management um, you know I think about other aspects of agriculture have seen much the same uh, kind of boom for lack of a better word in, in evolution of practices and how technology has, has impacted that uh, from an uh, from an extension standpoint, too, I think we've seen um, we've seen some shifts here as well, and I think some of those, um, you know, to some extent, I think are um, I think it's pretty clear that our, our campus-based uh, uh, FTEs or full-time equivalents in at least in professors and extension certainly has trended downward. Uh, the data would tell us that, um, but we still have this need to ensure that that. You know that the knowledge, the information, um, is making it, is being translated into practice uh, within our within the real world, and so, and so we find ourselves, uh, you know, continuing to try to foster and rely on both statewide programs and then also regional and local extension efforts, um, you know, to get that done. I think from the you know one of the other evolutions I've seen has been uh, um, really at the county level. Too, in terms of um, you know, and in, 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 in terms of um, you know, ag specialist staffing and, and, and things like that. I think that's been a we we've we've certainly um, and you know, I've been a proponent of, of regionalization, at least from a standpoint of regional specialists, um, because I think we can more broadly or more comprehensively serve um, our agricultural constituents uh, with those types of, of teams if we do it right. Um, you know, but, but I think that clearly the, the, the need to, while we do that, to make sure we still remain very closely linked at the, at the local level, at the county level, is very, very important. And so I think it's, it, we need to be mindful, um, you know, as we, as we try to, to make these alliances and things like that. I made the comment earlier about decreasing, you know, faculty effort or FTE and extension. Uh, but at the same time, there's certainly lots of faculty here on campus that may not have formal extension appointments, yet clearly um, are very much engaged in um, in the, the outside world and engaged at the, you know with farms and engaged with um, uh, you know engaged with uh, with you know agribusiness and things like that. I you know think about from my own group back in animal science, people like Mike Van Amberg and Julio Giordano do a lot of that. Neither one has a formal extension appointment, yet probably do. Uh, Mike probably does uh, has much or more extension than than I do. I think some days, but uh, but anyways. So so I think I think it's just, it's just going to continue to take place, but it's going to evolve and form. I think as as we go forward. Well, it's interesting. I mean, just I never really thought of it this way, but when you start talking about ag field, you know, ag research fields and things like that, it's almost essential for someone who's engaged in agricultural research to engage the end user, the stakeholder. Uh, it's impossible, I mean, I would imagine it'd be very difficult to complete the research cycle without actually going out into the world and testing it. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great point. And that's probably one of the things I learned, one of my most valuable um, lessons early in my career was that, uh, 
was to uh, to recognize as a, as a researcher or a young scientist or somebody looking at extension just you know how much I didn't know when I went out there in the real world and started engaging with again with farms with extension educators with with nutritionists with veterinarians and, and others um, and it, it really helps to inform um, not only research from a topical standpoint but I think also the way in which research is, is conducted so that it yields outcomes that are then uh, translatable um, into the outside world, into that context. Um, and so the, uh, um, and, and so for me that was, that was incredibly valuable. And in fact, I, I think in my, you know, I, I, I'll tell people that, uh, you know, first couple of years I was out um, engage with the industry, um, I'll bet you I learned an awful lot more from them than, than they ever possibly learned from me. And, and, and so, uh, you know, and, and again, you, you recognize what you don't know, but you also recognize what's important. Um, and you recognize what the, what the important things are to go after from a, from a research standpoint. And then also how it affects the end, the end user. So, so in looking ahead, in looking at the next decade or so in, in agriculture, what do you see as, as the major challenges that, that are being faced, will be faced? Well, I think there's, you know, you can, you can take that, that question on multiple levels. Um, you know, I think that, uh, that the, uh, the need for people, because uh, at the end of the day, we're still in a, we're still, um, you know, human capital, right? People are still our most valuable resource. You know, and, and the, the availability of skilled uh, uh, people, the of people who have an edu- who have an educational foundation, um, to embrace change um, and learn how to work with change, whether it's you know whether it's on a farm, uh, whether it's you know in a in a you know, university or extension type role, whether it's again agribusiness or, or otherwise. I think the ability to learn and evolve and adopt. Um, I think that'll continue to be very, very important. Um, the, uh, in, you know, back to the, you know, back to the con, back to the, the, the concept that, again, if you think about those who have been successful over time, it is those that are able to, to adapt, to adopt, um, to, um, to innovate, um, to, uh, to, to evaluate situations and and, and take uh, take calculated risks at certain times in order to you know um, in order to try to move uh, move the world ahead. What do you see as the challenges that are facing extensions? What do you see as as the changes that will happen? Yeah, the well, again, you know, you know, th- there's there's multiple levels there too. I, I think the, the human cap, the the people um, side certainly impacts um, us uh, because certainly we want people that have a you know, an educational foundation under them so that they can adequately um, or successfully anyway translate that, that research, translate things into, into practice. Um, we, uh, and so, you know, we need, we need, we need people with those skills, um, you know, funding challenges, you know, no, no surprise, right? It's, it's always a, it's a, it's a perennial deal. Um, but, at the same time, it just means we've got to be smarter in terms of how we deploy whatever resources that we do have um, in order to ensure that they that essentially we get the biggest uh, biggest bang, um, you know, at the at the end user level that we could possibly have. And so, and that you know that's that affects not only us, um, you know, here within within Roberts Hall, but it also affects uh, or involves you know folks at the uh, you know at the association level. Um, Folks at county legislature levels, you know, because again, we, we clearly are heavily reliant on on that local support uh, for Cornell Cooperative Extension and our extension associations. Where does this this resurgence of interest in in almost niche farms fit in the general ag picture for extension? Yeah, so I, I you know, in terms of um, you know, I, I think some of it's, you know, some of the, you look at some of the, and I'm not an expert in, in, in these things, so I should probably defer to those that are, but, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I think to some extent people uh, want to reconnect um, with with their food, for lack of a better word, mm-hmm. um, and I think they want to feel that, that 
connection, and I think that that's what's, you know, in, in part anyway, um, driven certainly an interest in this area, but also in lots of areas around New York and the Northeast and, you know, frankly, the world um, in terms of, 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 uh, of developing those types of, of market opportunities. Um, you know, again, Cornell Cooperative Extension is going to continue to be a, a, a resource provider um, and a source of knowledge. Uh, you know, but at the same time, uh, you know, I, I we, we can't forget about, uh, you know, at least in the world of food, right, we can't forget about, um, you know, the fact that, that, that the vast majority of food um, is still going to be come through, uh, come through what I'll call more, um, you know, kind of production agriculture. And, and so we can't lose sight of that. And I think, I think as extension, uh, we need to make sure that we're, and we're helping them uh, innovate as well.